Now let's consider why chromatograms are spread. Okay. Now usually uh, um, the we obtain um, chromatograms, uh, yeah, but uh, with a certain uh, broadness. Okay. So we have to consider the um, several mechanisms of band broadening. So uh, now we are going to identify the, at least the three uh, mechanisms of band broadening, and uh, from the uh, uh, statistics, you know, the variance is additive. Yeah, we have to uh, remember this variance is additive. If we take a square root of this variance, that's the uh, uh, standard deviation. A standard deviation is not additive. Yeah? This is the property of a variance. Okay? So observe the uh, the, uh, the variance for band broadening is the sum of individual uh, broadening mechanisms. If there are in the number of uh, broadening mechanisms, and then we can uh, in summation we can do the summation of each you know, the, the variance okay for the band broadening okay? and uh, uh, band broadening. Uh, yeah, mostly occurs inside the column, but outside the column also right, there will be a band broadening. Okay. Uh, here is an example. Band has a finite width even before entering the column, right? Why? Uh, you know, it's a, to do the separation, you, know, you, you have to inject your mixture sample. Okay. And then, uh, so far, we simply assume that when you inject uh, the mixture sample with uh, usually with a, a syringe, and we assumed that uh, at the moment of injection, the all the uh, your sample is concentrated in a very infinitely uh, thin uh, layer, right? thin region of the column. But actually, that is not true. Okay, and. Uh, in the, in the injection ports, you know, band broadening uh, takes place. Okay, if a band is applied a is a plug with a delta t. Okay, so this delta t is not zero. It has a certain uh, value. Okay, the variance of the final uh, bandwidth is given by this one. You know? The sigma square. This is the variance uh, uh, due to the injection is. Uh, due to the uh, actually uh, we know the band broadening by the, the detector okay so it can be uh, you know equated to uh, variance of a detector okay and this is uh, uh, well delta t squared divided by 12 all right same relation holds for broadening in a detector okay requires the, a time delta t for sample to pass through and right also in the detector, uh, there is some the band broadening. If uh, the requires a time delta t for sample to pass through, yeah, detector yeah, is a, there is a channel, so uh, uh, the separate solute must pass through you know, that uh, uh, channel, right? So in that uh, channel, there will be a band broadening, although very small. If on uh, Column detection is possible, which eliminates band spreading in a detector, yeah, which means that now uh, instead of uh, uh, detecting the separated uh, solute individually, uh, on column detection, yeah, if that is possible, yeah, which eliminates the band broadening in a detector, okay, I don't know whether th that is possible or not. Okay. So here is an example. Yeah, band broadening before and after the column, but we will mostly cons uh, consider the band broadening inside the column. But now let's consider these two uh, broadening effects, okay? Before and after the column. A band from a column eluted at a rate of 1.35 millimeter uh, milliliters per minute has a width at half height of 16.3 seconds. Okay. 
The sample was applied at a sharp plug with a volume of 0.3 milliliter and a detector volume is 0.2 milliliter. Find the variances introduced by injection and detector. What would the uh, W half, one half be if broadening occurred only on the column? Yeah. yeah here is the solution. Now we apply it. Uh, you look up the uh, equation uh, 22 dash um, 9 yeah. there uh, we see this one uh, w1 half it, it the bandwidth at uh, half maximum equals 2.35 sigma okay now sigma equals w1 half divided by 2.35 and then this uh, variance it is a squared uh, value of uh, uh, no, this uh, standard deviation and it gives us 48.11 in a second squared okay injection time is delta t injection all right uh, let's uh, calculate delta t injection which is the uh, uh, this one injection the volume of, of the sample and uh, divide by the flow rate yeah here is the what is the flow rate on uh, this one 1.35 milliliter per minute okay and then we get 13.3 uh, uh, second okay so the injection the band broadening due to the injection is given by here use this one okay delta t squared divided by 12 Okay, and then we get 14.81 uh, the second squared okay the time spent in the detector is delta t detector okay and volume also uh, we divide by divide the volume by the flow rate okay and then we get 8.89 second so the variance due to the detector equals 6.58 seconds squared. So the observed variance is we sum up uh, these two, okay, here and uh, uh, this one, okay. Now also the column, mm? column band, the uh, column uh, broadening. Yeah. Now we uh, consider uh, this one, okay, and then we get the this is a total uh, let me see the band broadening yeah equals column uh, in the variance and plus this one injection and a variance due to the injection and also the variance due to uh, the detector okay so the variance due to column is 5.17 a second okay the width due to column broadening alone is uh, column broadening alone is this one 2.35 sigma column here okay which is 12.1 second okay which is about the three spores of the observed width okay observed width is this one yeah uh, Let me see. Mm. So there are at least you know one, two, three, uh, you know broadening uh, mechanisms, okay. Well, and then we calculate the you know the, the band broadening due to the you know column is 5.17 uh, second, okay. So uh, our, our observed the band broadening, yeah, the, the variance is given by the, the, this one. Okay, uh, this is the experimental, uh, you know, the value. Okay, and after the uh, this one, uh, the, this uh, chromatography column, yeah, plus the W one half uh, is sixteen point three, right? This observed one, and then the last at least the three. Broadening mechanical injection port, 
and detector port and injection column detector okay so we obtained this one uh, column band broadening okay and uh, let me see um, so uh, this column broadening is ah okay yeah this is observed one eh? and uh, if we squared uh, this value right and uh, we get 20 or 6 or 20 more than 25 right that's the uh, uh, about uh, three fourths of this one okay yeah. okay now let's consider the plate height equation and uh, we uh, already developed in a plate height yeah? we uh, divide uh, in, uh, the chromatography column into many many plates okay and individual plate has its own height that is the H okay and then uh, you know the studies shows shows that uh, this plate height is a function of at least uh, uh, one to three terms eh? a b and c terms okay this is some of uh, three terms so the van dimter equation tells yeah? h is a plus b over u x plus c u x here uh, a b c is the uh, uh, constant representing each you know, the band broadening uh, mechanisms okay and the, the plate height equation this one tells that the smaller uh, plate height means the narrower band width okay so it is important to make the plate height as small as possible okay yeah, but as you this in, uh, equation indicates a doesn't depend on the flow rate okay but P term, yeah? P term is called longitudinal diffusion term. Uh, by the way, A term is multiple path term. Okay? P term, now, uh, this, this term uh, is inversely proportional to the longitudinal diffusion. And C term, yeah, this one, is the, uh, uh, it's called equilibration time, and it is proportional to uh, the flow rate. Okay, so it is important to uh, understand each term. Okay, and when we plot the H in terms of uh, flow rate, yeah? and then A term doesn't depend on flow rate. So here, look at that. This A term is always constant. And here is a B term, P O actually P O over U X yeah? is uh, this way. Which is P term, yeah, here P over UX is this one. Yeah. As flow rate increases, this term becomes smaller and smaller. Okay, here. But there is, you know, this is a C term. It uh, proportional to the flow rate, and C term is like that. And then total H is the sum of the uh, individual uh, contribution, and here, this uh, blue curve is the actual. Uh, you know, plate the height mm, as a function of flow rate, and then we get here it, it passes through this uh, minimum. Okay, yeah, here in this case, the optimum flow rate is what 30 milliliter per minute or, or something, mm, or so. Here, okay, if uh, you uh, if the flow rate is uh, small, and then the plate height is too high, right. The higher plate height, plate height, uh, that doesn't mean that uh, that means that the separation is not good. And if you increase the uh, flow rate, also you decrease plate plate height. Yeah? So you have to find out this uh, minimum value okay, for uh, plate height. Yeah? And this one, uh, the plate height uh, depends on what kind of columns uh, you use. Okay? The packed column, 
packed column. Usually, uh, in for the liquid chromatography, you use you know packed column. In the case A, B, C terms are not zero, but for the open tubular column, yeah, open tubular column means that uh, the columns are open, right? And then liquid stationary phase are uh, coated coated inside the column, right? In the case uh, A term is zero, okay, and B and C terms are not zero. And capillary for the capillary electrophoresis, A and C terms are zero. Uh, only P terms uh, survive. Okay, uh, this is uh, important info information. Okay, let's first consider the P term, okay, which is longitudinal diffusion uh, here. This one, P term. It is called longitudinal diffusion. Uh, you know the longitudinal what the longitudinal means the uh, opposite opposite concept is transverse okay but here is the only longitudinal diffusion is important longitudinal means that you know the diffusion direction is parallel to the what uh, you know the mobile phase uh, the direction okay uh, you see the uh, uh, Sound wave is a longitudinal wave, okay, which means that you know, sound wave, you know, the vibration direction is parallel to the uh, uh, wave propagation direction, okay. In the meantime, at the electromagnetic radiation that is called the transverse wave, right? which means that uh, the electro electric field or magnetic field, you know, oscillates perpendicular to the uh, propaga propagation direction, okay. That's the transverse um, wave. So here, longitudinal diffusion is that. Look at uh, uh, this figure. This is column, yeah, and then you inject it here, and then now your mobile phase now carries uh, your sample down the, this column. Yeah? At a certain time here, it is, uh, you know, uh, it has a bandwidth here, and then after the after the, uh, you know. A certain time it becomes broad, right? Why? Because of longitudinal diffusion. Yeah? Here, there are many uh, sample uh, molecules, uh, it diffuses back and forth, okay? And the diffusion direction is parallel to the you know, moving direction. Yeah? So that's why it is called longitudinal diffusion, okay? So here, zone of solute after short time on column, and then since the longitudinal diffusion occurs, and it uh, broadens, right? So let's consider why this longitudinal diffusion is inversely proportional to the flow rate. Yeah, it is simple to understand. So if you move the mobile phase very rapidly, and then there is a little chance that uh, for the, the solute uh, to have a diffusion, right? So that's why this longitudinal diffusion is inversely proportional to uh, this flow rate. Okay, the faster flow rate, the less diffusion broadening. Okay, so sigma squared. Uh, this variance due to longitudinal diffusion is given by two times dm times t. Dm is what the diffusion coefficient of solute in mobile phase. Okay, in mobile phase. And it's given by, uh, uh, instead of T, uh, we use this one. Uh, L, L is the, uh, the column length and divide by uh, this one, uh, flow rate. That's the time. Okay. So uh, plate the height due to longitudinal diffusion is given by this one. HD equals sigma squared divided by L and 2DM divided by UX and equals B divided by UX. Here, P is what? P is 2dm, okay? Yeah. HD is the plate height due to longitudinal diffusion, okay? But we have to sum up three contributions to get uh, real uh, the plate height, okay? Now you understand yeah, the concept. The longitudinal diffusion in a gas is much faster. Right, in a, in a gas state, diffusion is much faster than a, a, a diffusion in a liquid. Okay, so 
the optimum linear flow rate in gas chromatography is higher than uh, liquid chromatography. Okay. Yeah, so usually in a gas chromatography, the flow rate is uh, higher okay, than uh, uh, liquid chromatography okay, because of this uh, region. Right. And now let's consider you know, the C term, yeah, C uh, uh, related term. Here in the Bandin Band equation, this term is called equilibration time, which means that you know, the uh, time is required for uh, solute to equilibrate between mobile phase and stationary phase, resulting in spreading of overall zone of solute. Uh, let's look at uh, this figure again. Here is the mobile phase, and this one, this uh, lower part, is essential phase. Okay, now mobile phase is moving, right? Your sample down along the uh, column, and then the, uh, there is there are solute molecules, right? So solute molecules now uh, not uh, distribute. Uh, to the uh, this uh, stationary phase, so there is a yeah, solute phase mm, in mobile phase and also in uh, the stationary phase. Okay, so here mm, and if there is a slow equilibration, right, and then now mobile phase keep moving, you know, your sample along the uh, this one along the column but in, in the stationary phase uh, maybe your sample doesn't move so there is in you know, a time difference here right so that makes you know, the line broadening okay so the the plate height due to finite equilibration time you understand if it, there it will be equilibration uh, absolute between mobile and essential phase if that is very fast okay there will be no discrepancies like that okay but equilibration cannot be made very fast okay so you, this means that uh, this uh, uh, the solute molecules yeah, in a uh, stationary phase takes a longer time than you know this one solute phase in a session uh, mobile phase okay so if you uh, your flow rate is too uh, the, the faster okay the equilibration time becomes uh, smaller okay there is uh, no chance of uh, equilibration so it will be you know, more discrepancies okay at the faster uh, you know flow rate so this term yeah, uh, the plate height due to this uh, uh, finite equilibration time is proportional to flow rate. Okay, this one. Uh, this is a uh, mass transport. Mass transport. Uh, the split height is c times u x, and then the c term is divided into two parts, c s and c m. Here, c s is mass transport rate through stationary phase okay here and cm is mass transport rate through mobile phase so the c is the sum of cs and cm okay and uh, for the uh, gas chromatography in open tubular column you know in the case the mass transport yeah, in stationary phase and mobile phase equations are very complex okay here uh, for cs yeah, uh, these equations are only applied to the open tubular column okay mm, which is uh, used for in uh, gas chromatography for the liquid chromatography you we use uh, all the time the packed column okay so cs is given by this uh, complicated equation k is a retention factor and t is what thickness of a stationary phase all right and ts is the diffusion coefficient of solute in stationary phase in the meantime 
the, the CM, this one, uh, mass transfer in mobile phase is given by uh, this equation, uh, more, much more complicated than this one, okay? And here, uh, instead of ds, uh, there is a dm. dm is division coefficient of a solute in mobile phase. And r here, in this case r, r is column radius, okay? And if d decreases, it reduces h mass transfer. Now this one, yeah? d decreases. What is d? d is the thickness of stationary phase. Yeah, think about that, yeah? Without you know considering uh, these complicated equations, yeah, let's consider t decreases. That means a very thin, yeah? very thin stationary phase is coated on the inside the column, right? And then what? Hmm? Mass transfer, uh, equilibration time becomes very short, and then it reduces. Okay, this one, uh, you know the plate the height, okay, and it increases efficiency, okay. If a solute can diffuse faster than the, from the farthest depths of stationary free into mobile phase, okay, if R decreases, okay, it reduces H by decreasing the distance bit through solute, the most diffuse to uh, reach Essentially, phase okay. Hmm? Yeah, column radius is small, so equilibration time becomes small. Yeah? Yeah? If column radius, let's see, is very big, yeah, there will be you know longer time for the solute to be equilibrated between two phases, okay. Yeah. And here is a temperature effect on separation. And uh, sometimes it is, uh, I may, may uh, many times uh, I, I would say that you know, temperature control of the column is really, really important. Mm -hmm. If you increase temperature, and yeah, you know the, the molecular motion, okay, will be very uh, active, okay, and then separation will be very fast. Okay, yeah, here is the effect. Look at that. For the, this is the, uh, from the liquid chromatography. Okay, so uh, temperature, uh, you know, the, 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 there are two temperatures. Okay, 30 degree C and uh, 100 degree C. Yeah? So you want to uh, separate five, you know, the molecules: uh, uracil, uh, nitroalanine, methyl benzoate, and phenol, phenytoin, and toluene. Okay, and which chromatogram is uh, is better? Yeah, this one. Yeah, this uh, this is looking better. Why? Because especially you know peak, uh, peaks one and two are well separated here. When you uh, you know operate the low temperature, okay. But at higher temperature, okay. And uh, although. The separation of one and two is not as good as um, this one, but uh, the the, the uh, time is uh, shorter. Okay. Of course, you may say that uh, the flow rate in this case is uh, higher than the, this one, but it is uh, five times higher. But let's look at you know the the peak five, yeah. It is separated uh, coming out of the column at 0 0.5 uh, a minute. But uh, if we multiply by, although multiply by you know, 5, it only uh, you know, takes uh, 4 minutes. But in this case, uh, at the low temperature, usually separation time uh, becomes long, right? So that's why usually uh, people uh, you know, program the, the column temperature. They usually <coughs> don't run the chromatography yeah, at constant temperature, but mm, they program the temperature yeah, from the low to higher, right? For example, they increase the temperature 10 degrees C per minute, like that. Okay? So increasing temperature 
means that increase the diffusion coefficient, right? Diffusion coefficient becomes uh, higher at higher temperature. Yeah. And also increasing temperature, decreasing mass transfer plate height. Okay, plate height is becomes uh, smaller, smaller. So faster but poorer separation. Right? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, you will get uh, you know very uh, this chromatogram uh, very fast at higher temperature, but you now suffer from the poor separation right? here like that. But if you allow this poor separation of uh, compounds uh, one and two, if this is okay, it is uh, you know better to operate at higher temperature. Now let's consider the, the, the last term, term A. This is due to the multiple flow path. Yeah? And term A is open called eddy diffusion term. Okay? So this term doesn't depend on the flow rate. Let's consider yeah, this uh, packed column. Yeah? This is column, and uh, you packed this column with very fine particles. Okay? And if we blow up uh, this uh, uh, this particles, and then uh, you may find, mm, although you try to, uh, you know, the uh, mm, fill uh, this column with the fine particles as good as possible, but there are still, you know, uh, you know, different paths. Yeah? For example, now uh, your sample, okay. Uh, should pass through uh, this packed column, okay? Since it, you know th these are the fine particles of a stationary phase, okay? And sometimes, you know, one solute may take this path, okay? To come out of this column, so you see, uh, this path is longer, okay? And it takes a longer time. To be detected, okay. But this one, a certain molecules now take this pass, okay, and this pass, you know, they, they uh, takes a uh, you know shorter time than the, this one. But uh, you know, pass one, this one is, is a straight, right? It takes you know shortest time to be detected, okay. So this is a real situation, yeah, in a packed column. So, simply, you know, the, the, the paths for the solute to take, you know, the path lengths are all different. That makes, you know, there is a peak broadening, right? So, this one, uh, this broadening is not dependent on the flow rate, okay? Yeah, this is independent of flow rate. Okay, band spreading from multiple flow path there will be multiple flow paths yeah it may, it may take you know even longer longer path right and the smaller the stationary phase so in order to avoid this uh, effect yeah, you have to make the this uh, you know the particle size as small as possible okay and then you will decrease this uh, broadening okay this process is absent in an open tubular column right open tubular column Stationary phase is coated on the inside the wall, right? So in that case, uh, there is no a term. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, uh, temporarily stop here.